Privacy is absolutely not dead. Uh, privacy nihilism, I think, is, is really one of the, the greatest threats to privacy out there. This notion that privacy is already dead and therefore there's nothing we can do about it and we shouldn't make any efforts to encrypt our data or try to you know, maintain any kind of control over where our data goes, uh, including information about what we're searching for online or you know, even where we're traveling at any given time. I think it's vitally important not to give up, because once you declare a privacy dead, then, then it is so. If you're not doing anything wrong, uh, you still need to worry about personal privacy. The primary reason is that even though you're not doing anything wrong now, you could be a criminal tomorrow, not because you've done something bad, but because the government can suddenly decide that dissent is illegal. People of your race or religion or ethnicity or people who uh, have similar sexual practices or interests um, are, are suddenly breaking the law. Uh, you never know what's going to be illegal tomorrow. There is some conflict uh, between cybersecurity and personal privacy, uh, especially if, uh, if you view cybersecurity as uh, this sort of uh, Westphalian uh, nation states fighting each other kind of situation. If you take a look at the cybersecurity bills, which are uh, perennially pr being proposed in the United States, uh, you will see that they usually center around this whole notion of information sharing. They say that corporations should be able to share uh, data with each other and with the government government uh, largely without limit and without any kind of consequence. And what they're talking about is user data, your private information, which they are currently banned from sharing with the government under, under many uh, perfectly reasonable uh, circumstances. If you think of cybersecurity as your personal privacy, then there's really no conflict at all. For the most part, I would say that uh, legal protections for privacy are uh, not strong enough. And uh, the best um, correction to legal protections for privacy not being strong enough is not merely agita agitating for, for stronger laws, uh, but the, the use of strong encryption. Uh, really, this is, uh, people view this sometimes as a political problem, but it's a political problem with a technical solution. Mobile. Mobile phone users should absolutely be concerned about, uh, about the amount of data which is being collected on them um, because they are carrying their mobile phones around in their pockets all the time. More and more people all over the world are increasingly using the internet uh, through their cell phones rather than their, uh, rather than their laptops or their computers. Not only do you learn uh, a lot about the user's uh, traveling habits because you've essentially got this tracking device in your pocket, uh, but you also learn a, a lot about their calling habits and you learn about their web browsing habits and their email and it's possible to infect people through, uh, through email and attachments and in infect their phones and use that to track them even if you are not um, able to get the information from the cell phone tower. So uh, yes, there is considerable danger and mobile privacy is absolutely the, the next frontier and one uh, that uh, worries me greatly. <laughs> The surveillance state absolutely exists, uh, there's no question. Uh, there are a lot of people who like to sort of divide the world up into good countries and bad countries, into you know, Western democracies and authoritarian regimes. And there's this whole idea that Western democracies um, follow the rule of law and uh, don't spy on their citizens. If you go to an authoritarian regime, then they're all terrible people who spend their time spying on, uh, on dissidents, uh, having the security apparatus show up at their house, taking them to torture centers and disappearing them indefinitely. The truth is, is much murkier and it's somewhere in between. The NSA has been engaged in warrantless dragnet surveillance of all U.S. citizens and all traffic that goes through U.S. telcos uh, for years, at least since 2003. EFF's lawsuit has been ongoing since 2006. The lawsuit itself is now old enough to go to grade school. So this whole notion that it's, uh, that it's just bad governments that run around spying on their citizens is uh, absolutely not true. The surveillance state is everywhere. There's a lack of clarity uh, in the conversation around the digital arms trade. It's really hard to tell if we're talking about state-sponsored malware, if we're talking about surveillance tools, uh, tools that allow uh, dragnet surveillance, IMSI catchers, 
uh, if we're talking about the sort of uh, trade in, uh, in zero day exploits. And I think that the, the answer to whether, whether or not this trade exists and what we should do about it really depends on which one of these tools you're talking about. In the area of zero days, I, I have uh, an opinion which is somewhat unpopular in civil society. I don't think that the trade in zero days can reasonably be regulated without doing enormous damage to security research and freedom of speech. It would be a good idea uh, to, peg a, uh, to peg the export of, um, of digital arms to a country's human rights record. Uh, I think that's actually uh, one of the key factors that uh, EFF recommends in our white paper called Know Your Customer, in which we actually uh, set up a, an entire set of guidelines that we feel that corporations should take into account. Uh, before they sell uh, this kind of technology to a uh, to law enforcement or uh, foreign government, it is a vital tool for speaking truth to power. Uh, unless you are able to speak anonymously, uh, you're not really free to uh, to espouse unpopular ideas to people who have the power to really do bad things to you because your ideas are unpopular. Uh, so I think that anonymity is absolutely vital. On the other hand, uh, people also use uh, anonymous speech to say and do bad things. They use it to bully one another. They use it to engage in, in hateful speech. Uh, people say the most terrible things. But I think that the value of anonymous speech vastly outweighs the, the difficulties that you can sometimes get into because people are able to speak anonymously. And uh, on the whole, I think anonymity is absolutely worth protecting. We spend a lot of time talking about activists whose computers have been compromised because of state-sponsored malware. And nearly all of these cases are the result of phishing attacks. Not the result of zero-day exploits being burned, but the result of people who simply open a document or click on a link that they're not supposed to click on. It's extremely uh, simple to, to recognize and it's, uh, it's fairly easy to avoid. User education is really your best bet and that's where you're gonna get the most bang for your buck.